Hello everyone and thank you for choosing to listen to this presentation on why affiliate marketing is good when things go bad. I think we can all agree it's been a rather challenging few weeks and months wherever you are in the world. Before we get into this I'd first like to give a quick introduction to Acceleration Partners and myself. So I'm Helen, I'm Managing Director of APAC and EMEA for Acceleration Partners and I've been at the company just over three years. We help brands grow their businesses through creating better affiliate marketing programs. I've been working in affiliate marketing for over 17 years now, which makes me feel very old, but I've worked network side, client side, and now agency side. We're a global affiliate marketing agency, and we have nearly 200 employees working across 34 countries, managing over 100 clients and covering 18 languages. So it's been particularly interesting over the last few weeks and months to see the differences in terms of the economic impacts, the impact on our own people and the impact on affiliate marketing across different regions and countries across the world. So I hope I can share some of those experiences with you over this talk. But to begin with, let's take a look at how the virus has really changed our personal and professional lives. So there's been a very clear economic impact of COVID-19 across the world. So this diagram from Bloomberg, which was published on the 1st of April, shows this really clearly. It shows the Japanese stock market, the US stock market and the UK stock market. And you can see how at the end of February and into March, uh, it just all took a dive. And what we've also seen is countries now do downgrading their forecasts. They're expecting much slower growth in 2020 than originally planned. And that's across the world. We've seen some markets impacted more than others. Travel is one very good example of that. So more than 100 countries have travel restrictions in place. And this diagram from Flight Radar shows what happened when a lot of these restrictions came into place. So Flight Radar look at all of the flights, the number of daily flights across the world. So this graph shows 2017, 18, 19, and then the red line is 2020. And where you see the dotted line, so towards the middle of March, you can really see that as these restrictions came in place and it was not possible to travel, uh, the number of flights really, really dropped. And this has affected not just flying, it's affected all travel. So people can't go on holidays and they can't even travel within their own countries and a lot of places as well. So the whole industry has really come to a standstill. The marketing industry hasn't been immune to any of this either. So the IAB did a survey of 400 US marketing decision makers very recently and found that one in four had paused all ad spend for Q1 and Q2 2020. However, it seems that affiliate marketing is staying strong. And for those of us that worked in the industry for a long time, this is not necessarily a surprise because it is an industry that seems to fare better in times of financial instability. And I'll talk about some of those reasons shortly. But I thought this was interesting. It was a report from similar web. It's for US data, but it'd be very similar for the UK that showed that affiliate marketing was continuing to stay strong and they were still seeing strong traffic levels and in some cases increased traffic levels. So for example, they saw a 15% increase in marketplaces, so that's people like eBay and Amazon. They saw a 68% increase in traffic for Walmart, 81% increase in referral traffic for Target and 43% for Apple. So although there are challenges in some sectors, particularly travel and finance, we're also seeing some growth in other sectors online and particularly affiliate marketing. And we've been tracking all of these changes ourselves at Acceleration Partners, and it's been fascinating to see how quickly things are changing. And they are changing on a daily basis and on a weekly basis. And we've never seen this before. This is very, very new to everybody. Um, so this diagram, just let me explain what the bits mean and I'll pull out some of the interesting insights. So in the company, every week we track what is happening in terms of percentage differences across all of our clients and we categorise them into different sectors. So the bars that you can see, the black bar, the red bar and the grey bar are essentially comparing the percentage change week on week. So the black bar is week commencing the 23rd of March. So that compares the percentage change to the week before. Red bar is the 30th of March. That compares to the 23rd of March. 
And the grey bar is the 6th of April, so the most recent data we've got at the moment is comparing to the week before as well. So I've taken a couple of the categories that we've been looking at because I, I think this kind of really shows how much it's changing and how it's changing on a weekly basis. So if you take the first column on the left, for example, apparel, um, it, it's been interesting looking at what's happened. Is this is really looking at women's wear and men's wear, and we've seen some real fluctuations here. So when the lockdown first happened toward the beginning of March, we saw a decrease, and then we started to see a bit of an uplift. So in a week commencing 21st of March, 23rd of March, we saw an uplift, but then we've seen it it drop off a little bit. So we know that kind of men's wear and women's wear is, is fluctuating quite significantly at the moment and probably not where we'd normally expect it to be um, at this time of year. And we can see this in what's happening in the market at the moment. So we know a number of retailers have had to shut down their online sites due to demand or due to challenges in their warehouses. So we know it's taking quite a while for some retailers to really switch all of their focus to online and be able to cope with the demand. And as that happens more and as they get better, we expect to see this starting to uplift a little bit. The next category is business solutions. So we saw a huge spike week commencing the 30 of March. So I think this is really when a lot of countries started to go on lockdown and everybody was starting to work from home. We saw a huge increase in demand for business solutions. So 150% increase versus we commence in 23rd of March. So that's for people like Zoom, uh, we work with GoToMeeting and Log Me In. So those solutions that help people work online or communicate online. Then the next sector, education, has been an area which we've seen significant growth in, and particularly year on year, much larger growth than we would expect. And we particularly saw this a few weeks ago. So we commencing 23rd and 30th of March. I think again, when Lots of countries were going on lockdown, schools were closing, nurseries were closing. You know, people were finding they have more time to do their own education, but they're also looking for education materials for their children as well. So we saw a huge spike in the first couple of weeks. So 90% increase on 23rd of March, then another 40% increase on the 30th of March. But then we've started seeing a bit of decline as people have probably started to get the materials they need. Then the other sector, health and wellness, we've really seen this go up and down. Um, and particularly in the first few weeks, we saw a bit of an uplift. And then week commencing 23rd of March, we saw it come down a little bit. But then at the end of March, we saw it go up 34%. This is really people looking for health and fitness apps, gym equipment, gym clothing. So we know that lots of people are being restricted on where they can go and exercise. So more people are trying to exercise themselves and in their own homes we're seeing some fluctuating demand for health and wellness and even though it's kind of down a couple of weeks it, it's significantly up year on year and where we'd expect it to be this time of year then the last column as you would expect travel isn't really picking up at all we're seeing continuing declines week on week and we don't really expect that to pick up until some of these travel restrictions um, are taken away which could be months some countries could be sooner, it could be till the end of the year. So we know that the travel industry is going to have a really hard time for some time yet. So I'm now going to talk in a bit more detail about the affiliate channel, because this talk is really around why you use the affiliate channel when things go bad. And the affiliate channel hasn't been immune to what's happening across the world. And we wouldn't expect it to be, particularly in those sectors which have been hit harder, such as travel and finance. So, for example, we've seen some clients pause their affiliate programs simply because their demand has stopped. We've seen other clients reduce budgets because they have to to keep their business running. And we've also seen other clients reduce budgets or scale down their affiliate programs simply because they can't keep up with the increased demand or that their supply chains are under pressure. So we're working with clients around all of these things. But it is clear that of all the marketing channels, the affiliate channel is the one that you can and should keep running if at all possible. And I'm going to talk through why why that is. So the channel, the affiliate channel is very unique. And I want to talk about three reasons for that. So one is the model, the paper sale model. Secondly, that it's a microcosm of online. And thirdly, that it's flexible and dynamic. So firstly, the paper sale model. It's a simple yet effective model in times of financial instability. So a brand only pay, pays for sales that are generated. 
So even if you're under pressure and being asked to cut budgets, affiliate marketing is a channel that you can keep running as the outcome is guaranteed and you can set how much you want to pay for that sale. So in times of uncertainty, this model really is risk free. Secondly, affiliate marketing is essentially a microcosm of digital. And let me explain what I mean by this through this diagram. So first of all, if we think about the four P's, affiliate marketing sits within promotion. It's a marketing channel. And within the marketing channel, you have digital marketing channels in which sits email, search, display, affiliate, social, content and PR. Then the uniqueness of the affiliate channel is then if you look inside of the affiliate channel, affiliates have to generate traffic to their websites in order to be able to then send traffic to the brands that they work with. Now, in order to generate traffic to their affiliate websites, they have to use all of the digital marketing and other marketing channels as well. So affiliates will use email, search, display, social content, PR, even TV advertising and print to drive consumers to their own websites, which they will then drive to the brands that they're working with. So what that means is the affiliate that you work with are experts at digital marketing you know this is their business this is how they make money and the opportunity therefore as a brand is you can potentially use affiliates to plug some of those gaps in your other digital marketing you know if you're seeing a high return on investment and you'd rather work on a cost per sale basis use the affiliate channel in that area if you're having to scale down and worried about paying upfront budgets use the affiliate channel to cover that area and they can hopefully mitigate some of those issues and I'll explain this with a couple of examples to make it come alive a bit more. So we firstly think about Google search. So within Google search, you have text ads that appear and you often also have what we call PLAs, product level ads. So that's when you get some ads like this, which you can see on the screen, which show the product and can direct you straight to that product. So in this example, I've searched for Nike running top. So when you search for Nike running top, you get a number of product level ads that come up. Uh, some of those are for resellers. So Sports Direct, JD Sports are in there. They direct to a Nike running top, but they're going through Sports Direct or JD Sports rather than to Nike itself. You then have some ads where they do go to Nike and some of these might be Nike's own ads. So they might be running them themselves or they might be affiliates. So price search, for example, is an affiliate. So somebody will go straight to the Nike men's running top, which you see as a second ad, uh, but it's actually being run by an affiliate, but it goes straight to Nike and straight to that product. And unfortunately, as what often happens in Google, you've also got some other brands which aren't selling Nike top. So you've got M&S in there, and you've also got Larry Dett. So some people are searching Nike running top, but they actually might never end up at Nike. So that's not great for the brand. So what you can do is work with affiliates in this space. So you can say to affiliates, OK, here is a list of all of our products. Um, you work with those products, you work with this product feed and you can use that to list us in Google search. So when somebody's ideally when somebody searches for Nike running top, you want all of those ads going straight to Nike and they may go directly through Nike through their own search or some of them may go through an affiliate site. And as a brand, it just helps you manage that space, make sure consumers are finding your products and your brand. And you can, of course, pay those affiliates on a pay per sale basis. There's no cost up front. There's no risk. It, it makes perfect sense to be able to do that. And lots of our brands are using affiliates in this way. Then secondly, we look at the influencer space. So in the last few years, we've seen much more influencers working within the affiliate channel on a performance basis. Um, and this is an example of one influencer working in Instagram promoting shark products. So shark is, is cleaning products. So on Instagram, this influencer talks about shark, shows some of the products that she recommends or has used herself, so such as the cordless vacuum cleaner, the upright vacuum cleaner. And then if you click on any of those, you go straight to the shark site and you can buy from there. So you're going from an influencer on Instagram straight to the shark site to the product and the consumer can buy. And this can be used on a performance basis. So this influencer can be paid for every cordless handheld vacuum that shark sells. 
So again, it's really thinking about your marketing channels and how you can use affiliates, use that paper sale risk free model in search, in display, in social, in Instagram as well. So lastly, the channel is flexible and dynamic. And I think this is really important at times of difficulty and times of crisis. And I wanted to demonstrate this with a few examples of how we're helping our clients through this period at the moment. So first of all, is thinking about pivoting focus. So we have a number of clients where some products they sell uh, just aren't flying out the door anymore, whereas other products they sell are, or perhaps in some countries they're finding there's been big increases or big decreases in sales and it varies across their marketing activity. So we're able to really pivot the affiliate channel and pivot focus where they need us to, whether that be by market, whether it be by product, whether it be by region as well. So one example of one of our clients is their demand simply fell overnight when, when the lockdown came across Europe, so particularly across UK, France, Germany and Italy. So their demand just stopped. So we talked to them and thought, OK, how can we still add value over this time when they're not selling anything? And we pivoted our focus to work on another project where we're finding new partners for them ready for when the upturn comes and, and people can go out and use their products and services again. So we completely pivoted our team and our focus to add value to them. The second point is, as I said before, you know, the affiliate channel isn't immune to what's happening. And there are a number of reasons why some affiliate programs may need to pause or scale back. And we're helping our clients do that. So talking to partners, being transparent, potentially keeping some partners on in some cases where we can, changing commission structures and really looking at how we potentially scale back or pause, but do it in the least impactful way. because. One of the key things about affiliate marketing is relationships. You have relationships with partners and some of your partners drive huge volumes for you. And you want to make sure that you don't lose that relationship for when you can switch things back on again. So we're working with our clients to make sure that is the case. Then on from that is preparing for the bounce back. You know, lots of our clients know that there is a lot of pent up demand and we want to make sure we're ready for that. So once some of these lockdowns um, start to be eased and travel restrictions start to be eased we know there's going to be a lot of pent-up demand and I think you know we've really learned from what's happened to some clients over the last uh, few weeks and months where they haven't been able to cope with demand you know particularly in grocery shopping and particularly retailers and we want to make sure that our clients are you know prepared for the increased demand once the pent-up pent-up demand kicks off again so we're working with them looking at different forecasts budgets planning strategy resource and really thinking about you know what happens in six to eight weeks when hopefully things can get back to some kind of normality in addition to that we're also looking at global market timings we work with a lot of global clients who run programs across all regions and countries and it's very clear that timings are going to be very different. So, for example, in APAC, we're already seeing that China is starting to open up and get back to some level of normality. So some of our programs can scale up again in China. Um, over the last few days, we've heard that Italy, Spain and Germany are starting to open up some of their shops again. So we will start to see some of the demand climbing back. So some of our clients may be able to scale back sooner in those markets and perhaps the UK and US. So we're working with our clients and really keeping on top of what's happening and focusing our efforts per country as well as per region. Then lastly, we've been looking at partner development opportunities. So many large partners have seen that their ad spend is reduced, some programs have paused, some programs have scaled back, reduced their commissions. So we're really helping publishers figure out where they can send their traffic. So if one program's paused, there might be an opportunity on another program. And we're working hard to keep up with all these changes, inform our partners and inform our brands and look for new opportunities that may be occurring through other channels, reducing their ad spend as well. And, and perhaps other partners that maybe have not worked in affiliate marketing before, may now want to look at this channel as a revenue stream. So the channel really is very flexible and dynamic and it can change very quickly. So in summary, I'll leave you with three thoughts. So one, keep your affiliate channel running unless you really can't. And if you really can't, make sure you manage that as effectively as you can. 
start planning now for the upturn. There will be an upturn. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And that pent up demand could be really key for you. And you want to make sure you get ahead of that and you, you can cope with that. And then I think be honest, open and transparent with your partners. So that's your affiliate partners. It's your network. It's your affiliate agencies. I think as long as people know what's going on, they can help you and support you in the best way possible. Then lastly, we know things are tough for many people, personally and professionally, um, but it will pass and there is light at the end of the tunnel. And I think we should always aim to look back at this period and be proud of how we acted and what we did. So I would just say think very carefully about your affiliate partners and your affiliate program and do what's right for now, the short term, but also think about the midterm as well. So thank you for listening. If you've got any questions or feedback or want to get in touch, then here are my details um, and stay safe. And I hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Bye bye.